Uh, all right, so we're gonna get into value this week is what our whole deal is. Everybody's doing something to do with value. And what I wanted to concentrate on today was landscapes. So value in landscapes. Uh, so like the image that's on the my class today thing is one of my paintings and it just shows depth, right? So as we get further away, things become more like whatever that background is, whether it's a sky or, you know, it gets a little darker into a back, into a night scene or something like that. So what I wanted to do today is split this up into four parts. Uh, one, we're gonna do something with mountains, quick, quick sketches, a quick sketch using trees, and then a quick sketch using buildings. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna combine something into this environment, this landscape that we're gonna do ourselves and we're gonna add color to it. Right, so we're going to be able to show depth um, and value light and dark right with color and we're going to use what we did kind of in our thumbnails so everybody has paper i'm assuming. If you don't have paper you have walls in your house i'm kidding kidding only kidding all right so all i'm actually i'm not even gonna use i'm gonna use regular pencil so. We're gonna do something just short thumbnails, right? I'm gonna do three boxes for my landscapes. One's gonna be trees, one's gonna be mountains, one's gonna be buildings. All right, so here's all I wanna do and pull off. You got your three boxes, they should be more in landscape mode than portrait. And we're gonna start with a set of mountains because I find this is usually the easiest to do something with. So what I want you to do is lightly sketch out mountains. So you're gonna have foreground, midground, background, okay? Foreground in front, midground in the middle, background in the back. So I'm gonna have maybe one decent size mountain here. That goes up and then my background or my mid ground, I should say, we'll have another range and then my background. All right, so I've got foreground right here, mid ground, background. So everybody do something where you're showing kind of a, a mountain range in three stages. Now for, for all intents and purposes, because we're only gonna do this in values in black and white, um, we're gonna say that the sky is white, right? So it's daytime out, it's super bright. And in order to show depth, as, you, as the object that you are looking at is further away, it blends in more with the whatever's behind it. So it, this would get lighter. So all I'm gonna do is super lightly, and I mean super lightly, take my pencil and shade in super light because I want it to I want it to kind of I don't want there to be a whole lot of contrast between this and the sky in the back right so that's it super light it, you almost can't even tell super light okay so now I've got my mid ground and as as it gets a little closer it's going to get a little bit darker so I am going to shade this in a little bit darker. Again, not not too much, but just enough to where I have a separation between this and my background, and definitely a separation between this and the sky. All right, there we go. I find it super helpful to do things in black and white when I'm starting with value because I can always add color to it later. Sometimes if I go color first on my value, um, sometimes I find I it gets a little, little off. Okay, so, and then I've got my foreground mountain in the front and this I wanna shade in even darker. So if the mid ground was 50% more than the background then this is gonna be 50% more than the mid ground. Okay. And so you'll be able to very easily delineate.
between background, mid-ground, and foreground. The value of landscapes, there you go. So fairly easily and fairly quickly, I can see as I'm moving what's closer, what's further back, I have depth in there in my landscape and I'm using kind of big chunks of rock. Now, for the next one, we're gonna do trees. So here's what I'm gonna recommend. Um, you're gonna just, I'm, all I'm gonna do really is draw kind of, I'm gonna start with some tree trunks and I'll, I'll probably put some branches or something on them a little bit. You can make them all kinds of sizes. And I'm basically just doing vertical lines for my trees. And then trying to figure out which one is a tree and which are just looks like a barcode. All right, so in here, I'm gonna start in the reverse and I'm gonna pick my darkest or my the closest in the foreground and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shade that in. So for dramatic, in fact, I'm only going to have two trees in my foreground, and this will be one of them. So I'm going to make this one dark, just like I did with the mountains and the other one. I'm going to start off with this dark, and then I think I'm going to take, so I kind of want to balance this out, I'm going to take this tree here. And I'm going to make that part of my foreground. There we go. And the whole idea we want to show here is this forest that we're walking into. It's got some depth to it. I'm going to pick my mid-ground trees. And I'm going to say this tree right here. And I'm going to put up like a branch on it. So this tree here is part of my mid ground. And by putting branches in front of some of these, I'm going to be able to show uh, some more depth between this and my background, because they're actually going to go, it's going to go over my background trees. So I've got one, two, I'll do this guy here, three, There's some, all right, and then all I'm going to do is shade that into half of what I just did with the other. All right, so shading this in to be half as dark as my foreground tree. Same here. So when I'm doing landscapes, especially in my paintings, I want to show, I like to show depth. And this is a very, in the, one of the latest paintings I just did for the Chuck Jones gallery, I did a forest with, from rabbit seasoning. And I wanted to show layers. So I had my trees kind of doing this where it was, it went from dark to, to light in the back. All right, and then let's see, I'm going to pick my background trees now my background tree is going to be super background and they're going to be even lighter so and what i'm do is i'm going to have branches that connect to each other it's going to almost look like they're connected to each other even though they're not um and that's just to show there's some here, i'll put one over here too There's some layers to this. And I'm going to go half as light as my midground. All right. So super light with my pencil. There we go. All right, 
so you can already see between there my mid-ground and background trees there's definitely a difference in lighting in the value right light to dark and i'll do one more over here and also in size so size of my trees get a little bit thinner as you move back only because perspective speaking they're farther off in the distance and actually i'm gonna there we go all right so not bad right fairly easy to show depth in a forest all right so there's my value the value of forest now we're going to skip to the third one and we're going to do buildings and what i want you to show in buildings is i don't want to just we're going to start with um do interesting shapes too not just rectangles so you can do you know like i've got the sears tower here i don't call it the willis tower i will never call it the willis tower I don't care if they call it Frito-Lay because they end up getting the naming rights. It will always be the Sears Tower. And that is all I have to say on that. Um, I'm gonna do a building with some interesting shapes, maybe some curves. Maybe I've got like a giant airplane hanger or something, I don't know. And then I'm going to do minor detail. Yes, yeah, see Scott, Sears Tower forever. I'm going to, and then I've got, I'm going to use my city skyline here. I'll do the Hancock building, which they don't even call the Hancock building anymore. They call it just some random thing. It's so sad. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll put a rectangle here, but I will a dome on the top so you can make some interesting stuff all right and then you'll want to make a little bit of a wider base here there we go all right so as you're doing this we're just kind of creating some building outlines and then we're going to use value to show the depth as far as how the city goes all right so i'll have a building here i'll have a building that comes lower here um i'll have this building here that looks like a water tower and maybe something that comes back here so we're just starting to kind of create our shapes Like so. All right. So I've got a few buildings. I've got enough to work with here using value, right? Light to dark to start to show what's in front. And I'm going to pick and say, you know what? Actually, I'm going to pick, I'm going to put one building right here, just a rectangle. This will be like the Art Institute. I am going to the Monet exhibit. It was supposed to be this week that got ruined. So now it will be next week. So this will be the Art Institute right here. I'll make some little notches on it. Looks like a castle, right? And I'm gonna say this building and this building are in my foreground. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade those pretty dark. All right. Same thing here. Shade this in pretty dark. And then I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna kind of work in the reverse that I did on the mountains and I'm gonna start to work my mid-ground next. So take your mid-ground, make it half as light, pick which buildings you want in the mid-ground. I'm gonna say Sears Tower, Maybe this water tower thing. And I'm going to make that part of, there we go. All 
Okay. Um, we'll put the Hancock. No, actually, we will not put the Hancock Tower in there. I'm going to make this building go over the Hancock building. And give a little bit of a different flavor here. So again, half as dark as my foreground. There we go. We'll do Sears Tower. And I might even do like four layers where I have something even a little lighter than this and then something super light in the back. Kind of the best way to take a look at, because I know when I started doing this way back in the day and said, no way, I would always make the stuff in the back darker, but that wasn't, it didn't show well and it wasn't as realistic, therefore not as believable. So really you just take a look at nature and you can see it. Have I played a Mario game before? That I have never played a Mario game? Dude, T, come on, man. Seriously? You think I've never played a Mario game before? I grew up on Mario. I grew up on the original Mario. Nintendo. Scott and Erica know what I'm talking about. All right. And then I'll pick a couple other buildings here to go lighter. And then I'm going to pick one more set in the very back to really push the value. I'll have these two buildings back here. These two buildings back here will be super light. All right. And then I might just do a little bit of, there we go. All right. So you can kind of see pretty quickly using value, we're able to create some distinguishing spaces. Oh, Sorry, Tater with an E is not, I don't know who Tater with an E is. Oh, that's Nathaniel. Yes, I have, I have totally done a Mario game. Mario, Super Mario, Super Mario 2, Super Mario 3, Super Mario, whatever it is on the Switch. Okay, so I've got these three. Everybody have this down. You've got three, three landscape kind of containers. You've got mountains, a forest, and buildings. You've used value to have your foreground push all the way back. My favorite Mario. Um, I'm going to have to say my favorite Mario is probably still Super Mario Brothers 1 on the original NES. I know it's super 8-bit, but I can't help it. The new ones are fun. Scott might disagree with me. Mar all right. Mario 3 or 1. I would agree with that because isn't Mario 3 the one where he has Tails or the raccoon? Where you can fly, help me out here. Throw me a bone. Eight bit, eight bit, eight bit is epic. Yeah, I think you can get the suit. Yeah, you can get the yeah, suit and fly. Erica confirmed it. All right. So we have these three set. That's how we're using value and landscape. Now here's what I want to do. I want to take the last half of today we're already at the halfway point and I want, I'm going to take this space that I have right here underneath my three boxes. I'm going to create one big landscape. You can use a ruler if you need to. I'm just going to go freehand because it doesn't need to be. My edges don't need to be super light. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to use your imagination and I want you to create a landscape that's imaginative it can have weird looking buildings it can have weird shaped mountain things waterfalls whatever but i want you to plan it out so you have your reference stuff up at the top right and i want you to plan out this landscape of however it looks it could be an urban setting it could be a mix of urban and uh, rural who knows and i want you to make it like inventive so you could go totally realistic if you want, but kind of use your imagination to make things almost a little Dr. Seuss-like. And then once you have that down, all I want you to do is kind of lightly shade a little bit, and then we're gonna pull in color 
to show value, right? So we're gonna we're gonna go for color and show value. So I'm gonna start with I don't know what I'm gonna start with. Um, I could totally do a Super Mario thing right now since we're on that kick. There are little mountains in the back that are basically just rounded rectangles. Oh, you're right. I haven't chosen an assistant for today. Guess what, Laura? You're my assistant. Wait, <laughs> I lied to yourself. All right, Laura. So as you are my assistant today, uh, I would like you to note that I would like to see that you're going to have to help me reference some things, which means you're going to have to help me showcase here at the end. So I do expect a full layout. All right, Laura, go for it. Yes, I don't have cool sunglasses like you do, but but I would love to see what you come up with. So let's get into landscapes. Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go spaceport. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do a little conjure a little planet X sort of a little duck Dodgers. I think at one time, one class we did like spaceports or something. All right, and I think this is gonna float because it should, because it's anti-gravity. And then this will be like a, this will be the hanger, the floating hanger. So you can add some detail. These do not have to be like, the stuff we did in practice wasn't really detailed on purpose but I would like to see some detail in your landscapes here. And then we're going to pull this off showing value, right? Yes. Spaceport class does go way back to the beginning. I remember we, I did a 3d thing and you had to pick stuff. And I remember Liliana and Heather Rose were in that and we picked out stuff that was around the house and we built these three dimensional like cities or whatever or this three-dimensional kind of town thing. All right, Erica, you can do this. So Erica, channel your inner, either channel your inner Martian or, um, and go like spaceport or do something like sci-fi. No, Mario, you could totally go Mario or Zelda. I'm not saying, I'm not going to pigeonhole you into you're just a Zelda person, so don't worry. <laughs> All right, we're going to go flag here, and then I'm going to have some contraptions on the side. Again, you can add some detail as you go through. What I want to do is I'm going to plan out my major elements, and then I'm going to come back and... I'm going to add some more detail. All right, so I'm going to say that spaceport is in my midground. And then I'm going to do something ultra close here, which is going to have more detail in it. This is going to be my foreground spaceport. It's huge. All right, so can we talk WandaVision for a second while we're drawing? Scott, have you watched it? Uh, yesterday we got through uh, Age of Ultron. Oh, so you're not even anywhere remotely close. You're still back in 2014. Right, so we were introduced to a couple of the characters. Oh, we just lost your video. Yeah, someone's trying to call me. Hold on. Okay. And I just dumped their call. Okay. Anyway. Uh, oh, and you're sideways. Yeah. I'm always sideways, but that's beside the point. Okay. Go for it. Yeah, so we you, were introduced to a couple of the characters, but that's as far as we got. So next movie is Ant-Man. Oh, man, why can't you move faster through this stuff, Scott? <laughs> How are we're we trying. supposed to have pro productive conversations on what's going on in the MCU? when you're all the way back at Ant-Man. We're trying. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you that Age of Ultron is important to what goes on in WandaVision. 
And I'm fairly certain, I'm fair, wait, who's only seen snippets of three? T, you've only seen snippets of three movies? Don't you lower your head, I can see you. <laughs> uh, all right, well, Liliana and Heather Rose, have you watched, are you all the way up to date with Endgame? Have you watched Endgame? The movie, it's a movie. Sweet mercy, people. Okay, Endgame's from like 2019. You've been Captain America. Oh my gosh. I'm not going to be able to talk with anybody about this on here. All right, never mind. I'm going to shut up. I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to keep drawing. All right, so I've got my foreground spaceport because I'm not allowed to talk about anything in the MCU. I'm not throwing a fit and I'm not throwing a tantrum. Just let that, for the record, this is not a tantrum. All right, if you haven't seen anything, it really, won't, it really wouldn't be spoilers because there's way too much to catch up on. It wouldn't ruin anything for you while you're doing that, but I'll still spare everybody. <sighs> Sigh. Sometimes I can be a diva and I'm okay with that. All right. Ben, ben, I'm a little shocked that you passed over Erica's comment that she hasn't watched The Mandalorian. Wait, I didn't even see that comment. What happened? <laughs> you haven't seen The Mandalorian, even the first season? Do we even know you? <laughs> uh, so, have you watched season one? She's going to say no. All right, Laura, if you haven't, well, you've seen the Star Wars because we were too young. Well, yeah, no, that's fine. Star Wars is, man. So my shipping guy across the street has not watched the end of Mandalorian. I have not ruined it for him what happens in the end, even though we're like two months past by now, and I am not responsible for spoilers. But I loved it. Scott, you're going to have to help me out with the comments because I'm rolling pretty deep in this thing. All right. I'm going to go, I'm going to do like four levels, I think. I'm going to have a, my foreground, I'm going to have a midground, stop. And I'm going to have my background, but my background is going to be consistent of a few layers. I'm going to have one giant mountain back here. That's going to be my planet X mountain. And it's going to have the, the X cloud that uh, that Maurice Noble put in. I love that. I did a painting with it once. I love Maurice Noble stuff. All right. So I'll have some X clouds. Who's nervously sweating? So Star Wars, me. <laughs> uh, the Bad Batch comes out soon. So I'm kind of excited about that. If you don't know what that is, you should totally keep up. And it's animated. All right, here we go. Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. And or I'm, I'm actually kind of excited about the... Uh, the new rangers or i forget what they call it that series looks awesome so does ahsoka okay so there's my planet x mountain all the way all the way in the back and then so i'm gonna have two layers to my back actually i'm gonna go three layers three layers to my background so off in the distance is that other mountain range. Just when you thought you were going somewhere, you get to this mountain and you find out you have too many more mountains to climb. Welcome to life, people. It's a metaphor. Too bad Soleil isn't here because that was a $5 word. Oh, well, Soleil, if you're watching after the fact. Okay. So metaphor does not count. Metaphor totally counts. What are you talking about? 
All right, let's see. Um, I'm going to call this landing pad. Landing pad one. Oh, look at that little number one landing pad number two. You're not really going to be able to tell what this is, but this says landing pad number three. Okay, there it is. Raya's dragon is horrendous, but the rest looks okay. The dragon you made? I think they're talking about the animated film. I haven't seen it yet. I don't think it drops till next month. Um, all right, so I've got the basics of my landscape down, right? And in the basics of that, I know that as I go further away, I'm gonna see less detail. So this mountain back here is probably just gonna be like a, a color. And actually, if you notice too, when you're looking at mountains, it tends to be a little darker toward the bottom. And then as you work your way up, well, it depends actually on the scene. It can be a little bit lighter as it blends in or depending on where the sun is and clouds, it's a little darker here and then blends a little lighter and it goes down. So this would be like one color. Um, this mountain might have just a tad tiny bit of detail to it. And this range in the front, probably not a lot. And I don't really want it conflicting with what's going on in my mid ground and my foreground anyway. So I'm gonna put a little spaceship uh, in the hangar here. And call this the, it's got little legs that come down, I have little wings, here's a cockpit. So this guy is little legs on the other side. And this will be sitting in my hangar. And then I'll show some other, maybe here's the a little bit of inside on it. Okay. There we go. All right, so I got a little bit of detail going in, not too much, but enough to show like maybe when I light this, um, it's got a little bit more of an interesting flare than just something totally out there. And then I'm gonna have this piece right here. So here's my, what you can't see in this one that you can see on this one is the, the bracing, the vibranium. What's up, Captain America? Come on, I can use that one. Someone's gonna get that reference. Am I the only one in here that's watched every single MCU film plus the series? Am I it? Is it just me? Has anybody else watched all of them? I got that reference. <laughs> ah, you pulled an Avengers on me, Scott. I appreciate that. T also very well done. I'm, I'm assuming I'm the only one. It looks like I am the only one in this entire thing that nerds out on the MCU. That's fine. I can be by myself. I don't mind. Okay, so I've got my, I'm gonna add a little bit more to the detail of my landing pad even. Maybe I've got some running lights. Point being in value too, as as you as you're looking to show depth, light to dark, and how all that works, um, you don't have to go super crazy in detail as it gets further away. Just it makes everything look a little confusing and cluttered. All right, we'll get some rivets in here. Maybe this has a line to it. I don't know what that would be. All right, so I've got some I've got some stuff set. And now with the six or so minutes I have left, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start adding some color to it. I just dropped my let's see, I'm going to go roll this. All right, colored pencil time. I want purple, so as I get further out, again, I'm gonna take this, I don't know what that is. Here you go. 
and I'm gonna go super light, right? Just like if I was shading with my uh, lead pencil, I'm just going super light on this. And I'm gonna use a blend of purples on my mountains. Because this is a Planet X-ish background. So you'll be able to start to see some differences here and then I'm gonna get a little bit darker as I move forward. And I'll even put in, I'll grab my pencil, I'll even start to put in a little bit of maybe some major lines in the mountain that you'll be able to see. Steep drops, that kind of thing. All right, Laura, you're my assistant. Here is your homework for the next six minutes. You have to assume that I think that you know everything about the MCU and DC and Star Wars. So Laura, I'd like you to draw a Wookiee and it's Green Lantern's best friend because they play in the same universe. Now, Laura, is that true statement or is that a false statement? You don't have to draw it. I just wanna know true Laura or false Wookiees uh, are good friends of the Lantern Corps. Green Lantern Corps. True or false? Answer in the comments. You have no idea. That's okay. True or false? You just, it, it's literally a 50 50 shot here. We're flipping a coin. You got a 50 50 shot of getting right or a 50 50 shot of getting wrong. Wookiees and Green Lantern. Come on, assistant. This is where you're true or false. Just do T or F. And not for my T, because my T is tater. Tater tot. That's my T. I'm referring to T as in true or false. You'd say false. All right. George and Victoria are saying false. I need to know what Laura, my assistant, is going to say. Laura also said. What's that? Laura said false. She put it in the comments. Oh, she did. I missed it. Okay. Laura said false. False is the correct answer. Look at that assistant. You did a great job. All right. So I'm in my value, right? Even though I'm using color, um, I'm still able to show light to dark, right? So it's just that contrasting view of here. And we'll try to do this a little faster. So we've got like 10 minutes left. What I want to do is I want to take the last five minutes and showcase wherever we're at. I don't care if you finished or not. Clearly, I am not even gonna be remotely close to finishing. All right, so assistant, here's my next question for you. When Han Solo and Captain America were flying uh, the Batwing, what was what was the number one food of choice restaurant stop? Was it pizza? A. Was it Italian beefs? B. Or was it cheeseburgers? And by cheeseburgers, I mean an American cheeseburger, which as we all know from watching that Metal Man movie, Iron Man is Burger King apparently, because they probably paid the most for the product placement. That's how that works. That's why they are the quintessential. Come on, come on, uh, cheeseburger. You are correct. Why are you correct, Laura? One, because whatever characters I just mentioned are all in separate universes, so that wouldn't make any sense anyway. But what I was really going for was cheeseburgers from Endgame because that goes to Iron Man 1 and he just wanted an all-American cheeseburger when he came back from the cave after making his escape. Well done, well done assistant, you're two for two. All right, now I'm gonna get a little bit more into this part of my mountain range and I'm gonna blend my purples a little bit more. 
And also I'm gonna use, while my, my colors as you fade away are um, less mute, they're more muted, meaning they're not saturated, it's not as intense of a color as they get closer because it, colors tend to kind of fade and get a little muted as you go further away. Um, as you get closer, you can, while you may not be able to see a ton of detail, you can start to pick up more color. So the color in my, in the set of three mountains and the ones that are the closest, the set that's in the closest, is gonna have a little bit more saturation to it. Anyone hear anything about red dot this year? Um, are you referring to the Chuck Jones Center for Creativity red dot, Erica? Oh, wait a, wait a, tee that up. So yes, I can tell you what's on the books for red dot right now. Red dot will most likely happen in September. So we're doing it a little bit differently this year um, to try to make a little bit more space as things hopefully start to get back to normal here. And we've got some exciting stuff coming up for that. So there will be a red dot, I guarantee you. It just is gonna be pushed back a few months. But it will be exciting. And there is a, if you are in the California area or if you are traveling to the California area this summer, we have the Chuck Jones season of creativity that we are doing. And that is for three months at the Great Park in Irvine. So we are working on that right now. And it is super exciting. All right. Yes, you can definitely procrastinate till then. I will also procrastinate till then. Oh. I would already have to be knee deep in my painting by now, if, as you well know, Erica, if, if we were doing red dot at its normal time. Yes, you do have an excuse to go visit Evie, who I see has ditched me for this class. But that's fine. I don't hold grudges for long. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask Scott. How many, Erica, how many paint or how many red dots have you submitted to? Two. Awesome. Is it the is it the last two? Nice. So what was your subject matter? And to bring it back to class today, how did you use value to enhance your piece? Hmm. Look at that. Look at that. It's called a tie-in, folks. And that is why I don't make any money at all. I'd like to show. All right. So, oh, you know what? Way to be on time, Nathaniel. Um, we're at the five-minute mark. So we've got this thing as I'm kind of doing some layers on mine. Go ahead, Nathaniel. Let us see, my man, what you have. Yes, to make sure I was the biggest Mario fan, I made this. <laughs> Peach's Castle. Well done, sir. And to make sure I'm the biggest fan, I also beat Mario the Lost Levels. So I'm, I'm assuming then, and I, I'm going to give you props for that. I'm assuming that you teed it up for me to make it seem like I had never, you were like, hey, I'll bet you've never played a Mario game when in actuality you knew what the answer to that question was. And you knew that I was a Mario Brothers world champion and went to Tokyo to play and took home the trophy. Did you know that? Did you know that, Nathaniel? That is a total lie. I have never even been to Tokyo and I have no idea if they have a championship, but it sounded good at the time. All right. So. I have a little geek credit to add. Yes. Back in, I believe it was 1992, I actually was in the Nintendo World Championships at Cobo Hall in really? Detroit. And I didn't make it very far, but I was one of the, like, whatever. You were still sort of. about 40 million people ahead of me. So, <laughs> <laughs> still impressive. I think we had to play Mario, Rad Racer, and there was one other game. I can't remember what it was. Dude, I used to love Excite Bike and Paperboy. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, we're going throwbacks here. Let's go throwbacks. All right, so who wants to go next? Raise a hand, put your thing up, whatever it is. Liliana and Heather Rose want to go. Let's go to those ladies next. Ladies. All right, let's see what you got. How is your, how is your landscape coming? Ooh, oh, there you go. Way to throw down the Mario. I, those little plants, what are they called again? Piranha plants. Piranha plants, yeah. Those used to be the bane of my existence. That looks awesome. I love the little, the Koopa Troopa, right? Did I get that right? See, look at that. I'm down with the lingo and the Goomba. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Nice job, Heather Rose. Liliana, how about you? You got a landscape? Are we going to see it? Um, hey, there you go. That's the start. It's basically what I'm doing right now is mine just looks like a whole bunch of whatever is I'm blocking in my, my value shades. So well done. I will high five you. Um, who wants to go next? Here's Kat. Kat. Um, sorry, my video has chosen right now to be extremely blurry. Okay. Um, and I'm also in the corner because I had to plug in my device, but. Oh, you uh, because you got in trouble, right? It wasn't like nobody no. put the baby in a corner. Okay. No. There's an 80s I'm reference. Sorry. Three of us got it. Next. All right, let's see what you got. Nice. Stupid mirror image. Ugh. That's okay. So I dig what you have going on. It almost reminds me of like a dessert playland. Is that what it is? Kind of, yeah. Because I, I see like a three scoops tower and I could totally do that right now. Awesome. All right, dude. Keep blocking that stuff in. Get that value down as you create the depth in your landscape. Well done. Uh, let's go to T. And then Erica. Several minutes of tediously shading a single spike because this the one highlight didn't look right, but A, I got it. So dude, I love the fact that you use the word tedious. So yes, well done, man. I and see I love the blocking too. You've got your light source down. I can see that in the um, shadows and stuff on what you have in the foreground. Super cool. Thank you. Very nice. Absolutely. All right, let's go to Vic, uh, Erica. There we are. So I started copying you because that's what I do. I end up copying directly, <laughs> trying to improve as I go. I did terrible on the buildings, but then my, let me see. If I can. Uh, tilt, tilt the paper. There you go. Right there. Perfect. So this is supposed to be the top of somebody's head or like on the back of a dog or something like that. And a little fleas or something. <laughs> so what? Here's, here's what I like about that. I, I wasn't exactly seeing that at first. I was seeing like this interesting forest thing. And now that you've said that, all I see are, that's all I see. Like, it's almost like headlight. That's awesome. I love this super close in view and that you took it to the macro level. Yeah, what, what, what should I, just out of uh, curiosity, what do you think I should add to create more of a setting in this? type of area i don't know i was thinking of putting some like dinner plates and a fork and a knife or something like that yes so like <laughs> but and, and, and the thing about it is it's funny right and it's contextual to where you're at that way um as you as you're taking something macro and you're able to you're able to people are able to start to pick up on the little things of what kind of setting it's in i think a uh, dinner plates and a fork and knife would be hilarious and then if you had if you had something to do that maybe show like if it was a dog or a human what what element would be in there that might kind of help to give away that they're on somebody's head. Okay. But I think like the dinner plate fork and knife thing is hilarious. <laughs> Thanks. I like your shirt. Thank you. Yeah, my rise of Skywalker. I had a conversation with my buddy and we're like they tried to rewrite eight. I think they did an all right job. I still love the Mandalorian. Watch the seasons. Then you'll understand. It's so good. All right. Um, did I miss anybody? George and Victoria, did you guys want to go? No. All right. That's pretty uh that's pretty emphatic. We'll we'll say no to that, no problem. And I'm gonna end with this. So in the overhead, which you don't have to take the overhead, Scott, because or you can do that. Now I'm gonna put it back down. 
All right, so in, in the overhead, right, the whole idea between value and landscapes, how that relates to whether you're doing a painting, whether you're doing um, sketches, whatever, you know, is light to dark, right? What's, and then I like to use real photos and, or just real, I like to do plain air stuff out in actual nature and to see how the values separate my distance, backgrounds, foregrounds, midgrounds, that kind of thing, getting into the forest, getting into buildings, having things overlap and layer, you know, especially when it's in a congested area like a forest or um, a city. And then how I relate that to my backgrounds. So I want things in composition, not to compete with each other. So in here, you'll notice, you know, as I'm, I'm using values to create space, I'm also creating space, kind of taking from what we did earlier and using negative space around to make sure that like my focal points are there. So things are drawn in, you know, in certain ways to where like, even when this, this will be a much darker and more detailed that will separate itself from the background as well. Um, and then this doesn't get super complicated in detail because that's, as you see in real life, when you're talking, even looking at value of um, colors and like just light and dark, you're not going to notice a whole lot of detail here. And that would compete with what's going on in the foreground. So that's that. That's my unfinished drawing. Do you know how many unfinished drawings I have from this stuff? I have a ton. I went through it. There's a lot of unfinished drawings. Um, so I hope that helped as we work a little value. This whole week is all about value. Everybody's taking different sides to it. I think Lee's going from a a uh, photograph like black and white photograph tomorrow, which is awesome. Um, really imitating life and pulling in what she's doing there. And then Daryl and Mike and Nalene and what they pull off. And then next week, we pull it all together and each class deals with everything we've been doing and going back to basics. And then we have some very cool stuff coming up to announce for March, April, and kind of what we're looking at doing for the rest of the year. Animation, comic books, mm, it's delicious. All right, T knows what I'm talking about. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you're in a part of the world that is above freezing, which is not me uh, or T, then uh, have a walk outside, enjoy yourself. We'll be a little jealous as I go plowing through uh, negative four degrees and two feet of snow. It's raining. Yeah, I don't feel bad for you in the rain. I'm gonna just say I don't, I don't feel too bad. Is it above 40 degrees and raining is the key. Yeah, see. So, you know, at least your car is getting a free wash. Mine looks like a salt block right now. And I have a black truck. So 65 here, Scott, nobody asked you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have a great afternoon uh, and we will see you next week. I hope you catch everything you can this week with the other teachers. Cause they are fantastic. Bye. You're welcome. See you guys Monday. Bye everyone. Bye. bye it's been raining here for like three days. So bye. Uh -huh.